and it was torture trying to quit on my own well what he told me to do made it a lot easier and then uh my sleep didn't really get affected until it was time for to, to not do any at all so what happened was this guy told me uh you're gonna have to eventually not do any and i just couldn't i couldn't do it like i was like i, I can't not take that one in the middle of the day and that one at night like i, I feel like i i'm holding on too tight to it I, I don't know what to do so he's like all right when you're ready you know the same way you did this when you're ready when you're ready so i had to come out to la for a little bit i come out to, and this guy was this guy uh, was a specialist and he charged 300 dollars to go see him and after i saw him a bunch i was like listen i can't afford to come see you anymore so he's like well what i'll do is i'll charge you 150 to come see me so i'm like okay so i'm paying the 150 to see him but i'm also getting the xanax from him so in my head i'm like well that's i'm saving this amount of money by not buying the fucking xanax right so uh so he tells me I go, I'm going to LA for a while. So I come back from LA, however long I was gone, and we have our first meeting and my bill shows up and it's $300. And I was like, oh, this guy forgot that we're on a fucking 150 schedule. So I hit him up. I go, hey, remember, it's, it's 150, not 300. And he was like, oh, no, well, you didn't see me for a while. You were in LA. Uh, now that you're back, it's, it's 300. And I was like, what do you mean? We agreed on 150. When were you going to tell me those three? And I don't know if it's the fucking Irish in me, if it's the addict in me, it, what the fuck it is. But I was like, fuck this. I was like, I'm not taking that Xanax tonight. I don't care if I fucking feel like I'm falling out of a plane. I don't care if I feel like I'm fucking, I can't sleep for fucking three days. I don't give a fuck. I'm never seeing this dude again. And I'm not restarting this shit with somebody else. And I remember three days later, I'd never touched a, a Xanax ever again. So you've been sober for how long now? Uh, so like I said to you, there's times where like I hurt myself in the gym and I'm like, I'll smoke a joint at night or take a fucking hit that off a bowl. Listen, reefer don't fucking count. Oh yeah. I, that's how I feel. But I also, don't I don't count. like to say I'm sober and then somebody sees me right, fucking buying smoking. weed at the reefer store and yeah, yeah. My thing was the alcohol too. Yeah. I could do one drink, two drinks. When, when I was 20, once I did three Southern Comfort and alcohol and, alcohol and uh, orange juice, you could rape me. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you the truth. Yeah. Yeah. When yeah. I was 20, the first one I could control the second one i can control but the third one we're going to washington square park with cop and eight valiums for ten dollars yep then we're going to 135 pick up an eight ball and then we're going to stop at 181 and pick up some fucking f66 express and we're shooting over the george washington bridge so for me today reefer is my teddy bear yeah that is my teddy bear right i could look you both in the eye right now and leo tell you i don't even think i get that high anymore Right. I get up in the morning and I do, you know, eight bongs at fucking seven. Well, yeah, I've seen the fucking video. I know what you're up to. Yeah, and I do it <laughs> to get an appetite. Yeah, exactly. Yep. If I don't smoke in the morning, I won't be fucking hungry. Yep. It's a drag to eat. So if I smoke, I'll do a protein shake, something, yep. something, just so I don't go out and then get sick while I'm driving. Right. Because if I don't eat, I'll get sick while I'm driving. Right. I don't consider weed at all. Yeah, I but but by the way, there's some people who do and they can't they can't smoke it because they feel like that's a that's fucking a domino. Right. That, Absolutely, yeah, it's, it's a, a trigger. Thing. Absolutely, and I get that. For me, I need it to keep me off. Look, they do sober October. Yeah, yeah. And I spoke to Joe about. It. I go, I'm going to be strictly honest with you. Do you know when I went off the most in my life when I was told? See, I'm Cuban, and being Cuban is almost as bad as being fucking Irish. Okay, almost as stubborn as being fucking Irish. We're even more stubborn than you guys. If you said to me, Joey, I don't like when the, you want to see the doctor because I think you should quit with everything. Yeah, that's one thing. When you went on probation and they told you you couldn't smoke, that's what eats my craw. Yeah, the rule is the one yeah. I'll break. So if you come to me tomorrow and go, look, I'm gonna start testing you once a month. You know, we're gonna test you for whatever. I'm gonna smoke. It's when you say to me, like yesterday, I got up. I didn't smoke till last night. Yeah, I got up yesterday morning and whatever, fucking Omaha, and I didn't have papers. I had the weed, but I didn't smoke. And I got home and I got busy, and like last night, nine o'clock, I smoked. Yeah, and I was happy. I got a little hungry, whatever, you know. But that's my teddy bear. Yeah, alcohol. Let me tell you something. I never liked it. I'll right. drink it oh, to I be social. It. I'll drink it to Jesus Christ. There's nothing worse in the world than standing there with a Coke with a lime and faking that you're drinking a fucking Cuba Libre like a half <laughs> yeah. a fag. Okay, nothing bothers me more than that. <laughs> to have a fucking 
Either you're drinking or you're fucking not. Yeah. If you're not drinking, go to home because you're making me fucking depressed. <laughs> yeah. It's like when Christopher didn't toast Paulie. He <laughs> toasted him at war. He goes, what, are you trying to jinx me? You know? <laughs> if you're not going to drink, go home. Do me a favor. You know those people that go to the bar? I'm here to drink a club soda. Just go home. You're, you're making yeah. everybody get depressed. I always, I grew up in the 70s, Robert, where every TV show, if you watch any TV show from the 70s, when you walked in a person's house, they had a cart. A liquor right, cart right. with two bottles, no label. You didn't know what you were drinking. It's not like, all right, let me get a scotch. No. They poured and gave it to it you. It was brown. That's it. It was brown. Yeah. Rye. It could be whatever, and you drank it. Right. Now we got pussies. Now people are like, well, it's got eight calories. Right. You know, in the 70s, boom, bombs the hoy. I wish I could do that. Yeah. I wish. Me too. I could go to three places every day. <laughs> And just have a drink. Lee, give, give a drink. Get a tequila. Boom. And then yeah. not not again. Like maybe like at six, have another one. Right. And maybe go to the comedy store and have another one. You know how many times I go to the comedy store and I'm like, tonight I'm drinking. Right. I'm getting a fucking margarita. How long has it been since you've tasted alcohol? Saturday night. Okay, yeah, yeah. I had two shots of uh, Jägermeister on stage. Yeah. Right. Friday night. But again, it doesn't do nothing to me. Yeah. I had two doubles of Jaeger, and it's just, for me, it's like I just went over my Weight Watcher points with sugar. Right. That's what I think. So it was the blow. It was all the I, blow. That was my world. I love right. the blow, the pill, and the, the alcohol combination. The pill, like downers? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't like no... No way. Ugh. No speed, no... What's that shit? Adderall? Yeah, I, I took that, that once, and I remember I was like, I don't even... I just feel like I can't sleep. That was it. I didn't, I didn't... I didn't... Like... For me, Percocet, like, like I said earlier, I, I loved fucking Percocet. I loved drinking. I loved doing that shit. But probably, I mean, there's a chance that Coke is like the thing I did the most of. And like, I, I never even liked it. You know what I mean? Like, I remember there were times where I'd wake up next to a girl and see her doing fucking wake up doing Coke. And I'm like, oh, my God, like, what the fuck is. But then, you know, I would think that was disgusting and not want to be around her. And then 10 hours later, I'd be like, where's that fucking girl's number? You know, like I'd be looking to fucking get because I would I would be fucking six drinks in. And like I got to a point where I would drink a bottle of tequila before I'd go out, before I would leave my apartment. So I would I had like those red fucking plastic cups in my apartment and I'd fill it with I, like I would be sitting on my couch feeling like shit. And I'd be like, all right, I'm going to fill a fucking cup up with tequila drink it and then by somewhere around the second one when i'm fucking smoking that cigarette and i'm start i put a fucking song on and i start fucking feeling good and then i get i had a place in the shower for my fucking cup of tequila and i'd be in the fucking shower to, and then by somewhere around the fucking fourth one maybe i'd start hitting people up all right where are we going what what time are you coming to fucking pick me up am i meeting you there and there and by by the time that bot there was a little bit left in that bottle, I was ready to fucking go out there. I'd put it in a ginger ale bottle or a water bottle, whatever. I would drink it in the cab or in my friend's car. We're going in like fucking Marines. You understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker.